Tara from the Upcoming. It's a real pleasure to meet you. I'm very well, thank you. Maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible film, Your Christmas or Mine. What can audiences expect when they watch it? Well, you know, Your Christmas or Mine, it's a, a Christmas movie first and foremost. It's a rom-com, I suppose, but it's a sort of strange rom-com insofar as, you know, the, the concept is that they go on, on separate trains and they end up going in opposite directions. So the film is about our two leads trying to get back together. So it's oddly a rom-com where they're not together all the time. Uh, so that kind of gives it a totally original and different twist. And, you know, I hope people find it funny and believable and real um, and kind of grounded and emotionally moving. But at the same time, it's, it's very funny, I hope. And, you know, it captures Christmas. I think that's what I would love people to feel like it's, it's a Christmas treat. And I guess Christmas movies are that kind of genre where... However, whatever other genres you like, everybody likes a Christmas film. They have their favourite, but until that's on, it's not Christmas in the household. Which of the films you grew up watching? And, you know, did you realise it's actually quite hard to kind of strike this right balance of getting a Christmas movie mar right? It's, it's a very difficult balance to strike, and that's why people end up with sort of things like Die Hard, or in my case, it was um, The Wizard of Oz, which I can't get my kids to watch at all. Watch The Wizard of Oz. It's a great Christmas film. It was always on. Uh, so that was my Christmas film. But then actual Christmas films, you know, Love Actually is probably the, 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 the gold standard. Um, it's a Wonderful Life, which is a different film to ours, but it's a terrific Christmas movie. It is very difficult to get them right because you want to be emotional and moving and, and you also want it to be grounded and real, but you want it to be funny and you want it to be festive, but you don't want it to be cheesy. And that's the tricky thing. So, you know, for us, hopefully it's not cheesy. Tom's script is very grounded and I don't think it's in any way cheesy. It's very funny. Uh, we've got an absolutely banging soundtrack. Uh, we got a load of kind of Christmas Motown hits, and I got new up and coming artists and some established artists to sing them and do covers. So we have fabulous Laura and Vula doing Purple Snowflakes, the Martin Gaze, Marvin Gaye song. We've got Maisie Peters has done an original for us. We've got um, Ella Henderson and Sam Ryder, the, the Eurovision man, singing a brilliant Marvin Gaye, Jim Gilbell. So, uh, yeah, so we've tried to kind of keep it as fresh and original as possible while sticking to it being Christmas. And I just love this cast that you put together. I mean, obviously Ace of Busfield, we've seen things like Sex Education Corps as kind of a newcomer. And then, you know, uh, Daniel Hayes, uh, Daniel May, sorry, and uh, Angela Griffin, and then Alex Jennings and ha Harriet Walters. How did you pull these people together? And I guess kind of make these different setups feel very lived in and, and they feel very like three-dimensional characters. Yeah, I think the thing is that, that it's, it's all about the script really if it ain't on the page it ain't on the stage and so you know once they'd read the script they all wanted to sign on um, and so we got our first choice actors right across the board um, they all joined in and mucked in and had a great I think had a great time on the film there's a fantastic chemistry you'll have seen between Asa and Cora and um, they're very different energies Cora is you know big and brash and outspoken and you know energetic and Ace is more contained as the character is more contained and reserved and so so seeing Cora playing with Alex Jennings in the kind of big house in Gloucestershire and then watching Asa dealing with this absolute madhouse that is Cora's Haley's family um, belting around the place and the twins and Danny and Ram John Holder is Pork Pie and Desmond and June Watson you know it's a it's a mad family and so seeing Asa stuck in the middle of that while Cora's racing around like a, a pinball in, in the Gloucestershire house was really 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 fun um, so I think it was the quality of the script really that attracted them you know and the thing that I also love about the film is you know in terms of the takeaways there's just this laugh out comedic moments laugh out loud comedic moments a lot of fun but then there's these real sort of like you know lump in your throat kind of moments of reflecting on what it's like to have suffered loss or grief and then and then be there at Christmas time so is it important for you to balance those things and what can people take away definitely and I think you know that's what I really I find sometimes at Christmas who's there schmaltzy or you don't believe the emotion or it feels forced or fake or cliched or hackneyed. I, I didn't want it to be any of that. So we worked very hard at kind of em the emotional backstories and the underpinning of where the characters came from and what was driving them. And as you say, there's a, a, a grief element in there and, you know, what that does at Christmas and, and the notion of family and what is a family. So, yeah, we, it was very important to balance that but not tip it over so that you still have a fun Christmas rom-com at the same time. 
happening. But, you know, for me, all the best comedy comes from pain anyway. Uh, and it comes from truth and reality. So we've tried to sort of lean on that for the comedy. Um, but there are definitely emotional moments. I sh we, and we shot them all together. So I showed a little five-minute sort of assembly one week to my 11-year-old. And he said, this is far too sad. I'm not watching anymore. This is a terrible Christmas movie. It's not. It, it was just he got all the worst bits in one go. Uh, but leavened with the, the, the comedy and the humour. I hope we've struck the right balance. It's tricky. It's a tricky balance to strike. But hopefully we've... Hopefully we've got it right. And uh, uh, you know, bottom line, the most important thing at Christmas is being with each other. Regardless if you've got a mansion or a, a, a small house to all, you know, uh, squeeze into, you know, it's about being together. It's about being together. It's about being with your family, whatever family is and whatever that means. And you know, there are all sorts of different families. And I love the sort of diversity of this cast. It's a kind of big melting pot of British society all piled in together um, in a big Christmas rom-com and so yeah you're absolutely right it is about being together and those are the important Christmases Christmases maybe when something goes wrong or it doesn't work out the way you expected it or you end up with visitors you didn't expect they, they can be the best Christmases of all so I think that's maybe the message that comes out of the film if anything 100% thank you so much for sharing that with us really enjoy the evening can't wait for everyone else to see the film thanks a lot thank you very much. Nice to chat to you thanks